everybody. I am Cinnamon Cooney, your archer. And today I want to do something kind of unusual and new and fresh for the channel. I want to talk to you about stuff that every artist needs to know about galleries. Now, this is some deep tea or deep coffee, as in my case, we get some coffee. So make sure that you're brewed up. Um, I'm not going to cover every single thing. There will be more videos because, again, this is deep tea. But I'm going to tell you those first things that you've got to understand about galleries as an artist going out fresh and new into the art world. The first thing that I feel as an artist that I would want to share to budding artists, new artists, frustrated artists, all levels of artists that are having this experience with galleries is that um, every gallery has a flavor. When I was in my baby art days, my new fledgling art days out there in the world and working in galleries and trying to hang in galleries, one of the things I came to realize is that artists do not use their brain when it comes to gallery submissions. Um, they would walk into a place and bring their beautiful, heartfelt, oh my gosh, like right, right on their sleeve art that they've created to the wrong gallery all the time. And then feel like there was some sort of approval, disapproval process going on um, about their art when actually it was that, that they just took blue bonnet paintings to an abstract gallery. You cannot take blue bonnet paintings to an abstract gallery unless they're abstract blue bonnets. So what you have to realize is like TJ Maxx, like Macy's, like all the stores out there, like Coach, like Burberry. These are all brands, right? And they have a flavor and they have a style and they have a thing. Every gallery has a brand or a flavor. Some galleries are about very traditional work and they have still lives and things that work in the home and they have very commercial mid-emergent artists. We'll get into that term later in another video, but they're hanging on the wall and it's like stuff you can take home and put in your house. Sometimes galleries have artwork that's very conceptual and we go in like a lawyer's office or a doctor's office. Like they really have this sense of who they are. And before you bring your beautiful, amazing, hard-earned, like created artwork into a gallery, make sure you look around and go, does my stuff fit here? Not, am I good enough to be here? That's a dumb question. That's not the question you want to ask right now. We'll ask that question later. The first question you want to ask is, does my stuff fit in? Is this part of the collection? And if it's not, there is a gallery that your stuff will fit in. And that's that first sort of dating. Think of finding your gallery like matchmaking. You've got to find the right partner for you in the gallery. And if you have a gallery that the, that the collection is hung and it's all disparate and makes no sense and it's like crazy together, it actually makes it harder for buyers to relate to the work. They, they don't know what to do with it. They get visually overwhelmed and it starts to feel like that uh, oil paintings at the side of the road kind of a thing. So it's good that galleries curate. You want a gallery that understands who it is. You want a gallery that knows who its collectors are because that's the gallery that can sell your work, right? So the first number one thing that every artist could start doing to have a better gallery experience is stop taking your work to the wrong gallery. Really look at what it is that you do and then find a gallery where you will fit well. It can be a match made in heaven if you do take your artwork to the wrong gallery, well, you haven't been rejected. You've just made a really strange decision in where you decided to bring your work. So no reason to carry that on your heart anymore. Be just like, I gotta, I gotta make a better plan. This is just not the place for that. The other thing I think that artists might not know and new artists or frustrated artists might not know about galleries is that every gallery is first a business and then a passion project. So no matter how passionate the curator of the gallery, the owner of the gallery, the person at the desk is about the artwork there, this is first a business. Rent has to be paid. Utilities have to be paid. All those beautiful walls, they have to be taken care of. If you have a good gallery, um, there should be marketing expenses that they're involved in. They should be doing shows. They should be doing opportunities for their artists, but that's a business. In other words, your art can't sit on the wall for a year. That's not good for them. That's not good for you. And so it's important as artists to remember that the person who owns this establishment, who goes home, they have to pay their own bills at home. 
just like we do. They have to, you know, take care of all the things that we have to take care of. And that means the business has to work well. In other words, don't come. And I mean, this is a thing that happens. Okay. So you're having a show and everything is really good. And you don't want to come in acting crazy at the moment. We're all trying to sell the work, right? It's not the time for you to like get drunk. You wouldn't think that's something that you'd have to say. I understand a lot of artists have social anxiety and sometimes they compensate with alcohol. But one of the things you have to remember is in your gallery, this is a business. You're not there just to chat and have lunch and talk about things. It's not a social club. It's a business. And if your gallery is representing your work and you step in those doors, you need to be on for any client that comes in. And you're and you can't like mess with their ability to sell the work. Maybe the client that comes in, they know. Oh my gosh. I would see this thing where like, so uh, uh, artists would come in to check on how their work was doing, which you should do as an artist. And a client would come in and that client would be very known by the gallery, right? And that client would in, be in for a specific thing. Um, maybe they're picking up a, a painting or a sculpture. Maybe they're looking for new work from specific artists. They're not there for you is what it is. They're there for somebody else. And uh, the person would leave the desk and that, uh, that artist would then go talk to that client trying to convince them why their artwork is the best. And it's important for you to believe that your artwork is the best, but that is not the moment, right? And so not only can you damage a future sale from this person, because this isn't the introduction that you want. You want a warm introduction as, a, as an artist. Um, you can lose that gallery sale and therefore damage your relationship to the gallery. So in all times and every minute, I want you to realize that the gallery is a business. And uh, the other thing to remember is not every gallery is good at business. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you have to be on point and it's finding that balance. Do you want to answer questions? Definitely, right? Like if somebody asks a direct question about your work and you're there, they're excited to meet you. Uh, people collect the artist as much as they collect the artwork and you want to be there to answer it. Um, it is definitely never time to be defensive or rude or insane in that moment. And I understand we all get there. I understand we all have trigger comments like, why is the artwork so much? Uh, does it have to have so much pink? All of those things. You've got to just, do you remember the penguins from Madagascar? If you have kids, you probably do the smile and wave boys, smile and wave. Man, that is my thing sometimes. Sometimes you just got to smile and wave, smile and wave because it's a business. It feels personal to you. It's your heart to you. It's your soul to you. But for every other part of it, it's a business and the business has to function if you're going to get your artwork out there and you're going to get your artwork collected and you have to be a participant in that gallery's ability to run their business. This next point is kind of controversial. I may not make some friends here, but it's absolutely true. And I will give you some story time to back up my reasoning for feeling this way. Sometimes the owner of the gallery knows nothing about art. You cannot believe how many galleries are out there owned by people who just like art, but do not know about art. They're passionate about it. They like artists. They like the idea of owning an art gallery. They always thought it would be fun to be gallery people, but they didn't study art in school. They don't have a background in art. Heck, they might not even have a background in business, right? So there was this period of time where um, a lot of frame shops in an attempt to bolster their business would also have little gallery spaces. And they really felt like they were a gallery and they were doing the gallery stuff. And then there's this guy, Thomas Kincaid, you remember him? And he came out and he was like, hey, art people, let's make a lot of money even in the commercial art space. And everybody said, yes, we want to do that. And he did. He made people a lot of money. Now, it was a huge investment for gallery people to get involved in that. Well, that goes back to every gallery is a business, but Kincaid moved product. And so a lot of gallery owners were about that. Now, you may not know this, but there was a Kincaid bubble and it popped and it was really uh, difficult. It was like the real estate bubble or any other bubble, the tulip bubble, all the bubbles that pop. When a bubble pops, it's brutal on the businesses that depended on that economy. And I remember 
being at the Javits at Art Expo and seeing, you know, my age now, middle aged, marvelous age. Let's just drop middle age and just say marvelous age couples um, walking through with like, like haunted eyes looking for the next Kincaid, right? They didn't know what they were looking for. They had run into this artist through recommendations or their community groups or churches or however they fell into Kincaid and had been successful with that, but didn't really understand what made Thomas Kincaid successful, why people collected it, um, what that would mean for them in their market, in their area, if they were trying to find another artist for people to get passionate about, or how any of that even happened. It was a mystery to them. And so when you're in a gallery, there's this thing, and I would see this all the time with artists that were like, oh, it's a gallery and they're a gallery owner, and they would like put them up here. You know, put a pin in that for a minute. I used to have a saying made my mom crazy, all hat, no cattle. And I used to drop it all the time when she'd be like, this person, this person, this person. I'd be like, all hat, no cattle, which basically means they look like a cowboy and they walk like a cowboy, but there's no cows on that back 40. In other words, it's a show. It's not reality. Sometimes the gallery's a show and they in it, in it presents well and it does that. But you need to be also savvy on your end. You know how it's their business. It's also your business. And sometimes the people running these businesses do not know about art. So even if they tell you that what you do is terrible or will never sell or isn't good, and believe you me, if there are people that don't know about art, they might actually say stuff like that. At least an educated art person will probably tell you that you've come to the wrong gallery and you should go down to the landscape space, not the, you know, uh, art basil space, right? They'll tell you where to be. Um, but, you know, sometimes they'll share their opinions and they'll be strong opinions, but they're not informed opinions. That's the thing for you to realize. They're not informed opinions. They're not credible opinions. Uh, you know, there's that saying that everybody's got a, mm, the opinions are like, mm, and everybody's got one. And I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get dinged by, by YouTube. But you know what I mean? It's really kind of true. Everybody's got opinions. Not every opinion is valid. Not every opinion is based on experience. Not every opinion comes from something that you need to take away. So you as an artist coming into galleries need to go in uh, every situation with a grain of salt, looking for that all hat, no cattle moment. Doesn't mean you can't make money there. You can. I've seen galleries where they didn't know anything about what was going on and they did a great job and they took care of their people and they had a good business. They just weren't informed in it. And they had some very crazy feelings about art, okay? Um, but that didn't mean that the, the people that were in there didn't get, like, great experiences. I have so many gallery stories, galleries in the mall stories. I have to do another follow-up video because the dirt and dish on galleries, I haven't even gotten into when a gallery makes you dress up in a costume to spy on other galleries. In other words, <laughs> maybe they didn't go to business school and they thought it was a good idea to take the person running the front clerk and make them dress up in a costume to go spy on another gallery because somehow that results in what in business? I don't know. It's not espionage. <laughs> it's just art. Oh my gosh. So I, I have so many things to tell you, but this is the one. They may not know. Don't take too much to heart. What every gallery owner says, don't put them on too high of a pedestal. They're a business owner. You're a business person. They're a business person. Just try to keep it in perspective. Sometimes, though, you do want to like, you know, if it's somebody over from Christie's, maybe listen a little bit because that's an informed opinion. All right. Oh, oh, that one. I'm thirsty from that one. So I thought long and hard about what I wanted to put in this first one, and I knew I couldn't put everything I knew in this first one, because I'm, I'm like an unabridged encyclopedia on this information. But there were these concepts I wanted to share with you. And one of them is, in the words of Battlestar Galactica, this is you as an artist, you need to take this on your heart. I heard the original talk when it came out on YouTube. There's even a website named this now, but this is what you take to your heart. And I'm gonna say the Galactica version of this. Frack you, pay me. Say that with me, frack you, pay me. You are not an investor in the gallery unless you're a part owner in the gallery. If you don't own part of that gallery, if you're not seeing proceeds from all the sales there, if you're not part of the real estate, if you were just hanging, and this isn't a co-op, obviously, if it's a co-op, you're part of the gallery. But if you've just come to hang in a gallery, you're not an investor. You're not where they float their bills. 
Say it with me. I am not where they float their bills. You get paid after a sale. You get paid quickly. You get paid on time. You don't float the bill. If they are, as we talked about, not maybe great at business and they don't know anything about art, you aren't the one that needs to pay for that error in judgment or that lack of self-education. That's not where that happens. And I'll tell you what, I've never seen it work out for an artist, but I've seen so many artists fall into this trap. And here's where the trap really gets them. They start out in a relationship with a gallery and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and everybody loves everybody. And they go along and it's great, great, great. And then the gallery person starts to have trouble. The owner starts to have trouble with their business. And so they're like, they sell a couple of pieces and they're like, hey, I know we said I pay you on Monday, but uh, if I could just get with you in a couple of weeks, I'd really appreciate it. And the artist who's a reasonable, rational person is like, oh, well, I mean, they're going to pay me. They've always paid me. Oh, they're not going to pay you. Okay. So just don't do, you can't do that. I know you want to be reasonable. I know you want to be kind. And all I can tell you is kindly say, gosh, let's, uh, let's call the person Barb. My love to all Barb's out there. I'm not picking on you, Barb's. I'm just picking a random name. We're going to say Barb. You're going to have to say, Barb, I love you, but I cannot float this bill. Okay. Barb, I love you, but I can't. I need the money right away. Because if you ever crack that window, you open that door, you let a little bit of that, can I pay you later? Can I pay you Tuesday for a burger today nonsense? You are going to end up getting another bad word, ewed, that rhymes with ewed. You're going to get ewed, totally ewed. So you got to say, frack, you, pay me. You deserve to be paid. You did the work. You went up there and hung in the gallery. It got a client. That person collected it. You get paid. I'm sorry their light bill is having trouble. I'm sorry they're having trouble making their rent. That is part of why they get their percentage. You know, galleries get like anywhere from 60 to 20% of the art, depending on the type of gallery, the average being 40%. That 40% is supposed to go to marketing. That 40% is supposed to go to operating the gallery, paying for staff collecting the money, delivering the artwork. They're getting paid for something. It's not for you to invest in that, okay? They are, they're getting paid on their 40%. They got their money. That's what they get to keep. Yours should come to you right away. I cannot say this strongly enough. So like I know that, my, that I will say my mom and I are like third generation artists and I know I have fallen into the trap of uh, not collecting in a timely way and uh, kind of allowing the relationship to cloud my judgment. And I know my mom has, and it's like an abusive relationship. It really is because the gaslighting and, and, and these awkward moments. And then there's really like a tipping point where it has just gone on too long and they owe you too much. Cause if your artwork's moving and they're in trouble financially, they are going to get in over their head past what they could possibly pay you back. Right. So if it isn't, I just can't drive over there today. I'm driving over tomorrow and they have the check. It's for you. If it's not some reasonable, rational, um, let's meet after lunch, you know. And oh, and here's the one. And I'm, here's the other one. Tragedy. Tragedy befalls all of us. Tragedy befalls all of us. We certainly learned that in COVID and stuff like that, right? That said... You're not there to pay house payments and medical bills for another person. That's not what you're doing. You're there to sell art. So this is probably the harshest thing I've ever said on my channel. I couldn't mean it anymore, though. For every artist out there, if I can get you to not fall into that abusive relationship with a gallery owner, I will have done my work on YouTube forever. And all the, all the art gallery, like... Angels will be like, good job, Surfa, you saved another one because you're not an investor in the gallery unless you're an investor in the gallery, okay? And honestly, do you want to invest in a failing gallery? You want to invest in a successful gallery, right? Because that's what investment is for, is to get money back on your investment, not to just throw money at somebody else's thing, all right? So those are the things I wanted to talk to you about in relationship to galleries. I actually thought of 20 more things I wish every artist knew about a gallery. I think you've got some like peaks and snips. Um, tell me in the comments below all your gallery experiences. If you've had a crazy gallery owner experience, share it. 
share it with other artists because I know people are going to come by and read these comments and be like, want to hear what other people had to say about their gallery experiences. I have talked to artists over the years, so many years that I have been painting, over the years that I have been painting, I've talked to other artists and I, I could like do a whole video of crazy artist stories that I've heard. And I mean, crazy artist stories that I've heard. So leave those down in the comments down below. Tell me all about it. Um, we've got upcoming videos, so be sure and subscribe to the channel. If you want to learn how to paint and have your own crazy gallery stories, I'd love to teach you all about art. If you're an artist out there in business, oh my goodness, congratulations. I know a lot of people will tell you can't do it, but let me tell you, they're all wrong. You absolutely can. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.